Hello, so I want to do a quick video about just staying organized in OBS. If you're a producer or you're a streamer and you're just trying to keep everything like, I don't know, easy to use, easy to find, um, make life simpler, you can have a lot, lot, lot of scenes like uh, I do for some of these shows. This is uh, a show of medium complexity, so there's not too many scenes here. You can have a lot of sources, you have a lot of audio, you have a lot of everything. I'm going to try to make that um, as organized as possible. So I'm going to create a new scene collection, uh, blah, 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 call it whatever, because I want to start out with a blank slate and just show you kind of how I build um, how I build a show that I'm producing. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is just naming your scenes. This seems like a really obvious thing, but I'm going to go through some stuff even if it seems obvious, because for some people it may not be. Um, we all kind of have our own ways of doing things that in the moment seem like the just sort of natural way to do it. But, um, you know, I found some of these things from other people just watching them produce shows and then realizing, oh, like, why don't I do that? That makes so much sense. Uh, so I produce chess shows, right? And we have templates for those things. So I'm going to open up pretty much our most standard template. And this is for a show called... Uh, I am not a GM, Speed Chess Championship. And so our most basic scene is like this. And it's just a space for a chessboard and your two commentators, all right? And uh, the first thing I like to do is when something is in place, just lock it. Just click the little lock icon and now it's locked. You can't accidentally move it. Uh, by clicking on some other element that you think you're about to adjust and then oops no my template moved and now I have to fix that Just save yourself the grief of that and lock things once they're in place. Okay, so now we've got this I know what it is, but it's just called scene. So let's rename it and The way I name scenes is the way that I think is most intuitive Which is to just name it what it is. What is its function? What am I going to be thinking about in the moment where I need to switch to this scene? Because the commentator has said something that I go, okay, well, then I need to be in that scene to show this. So I'm going to call it um, main with host cams. Easy. Now, I'm going to add a new scene because we have another template that... Uh, uses a small analysis board. So I'm going to call it main with analysis. I'm going to go find my template for that. And it's this one right here. Boom. Now I've got my space for the board, space for the analysis board. It's got the analysis tag on it. Aha! It has camera containers for it. Now, these cameras are for the players, not the hosts. So I'm going to go back and rename this because I want my scene name to be much more accurate than that because main with analysis doesn't say, does it have cameras? Does it not have cameras? I want to distinguish that. So I'm going to rename this main with analysis plus player cams. Okay. Now it's way more accurate. Now I know that this scene has player cams in it, okay? Because there may be scenes with analysis that don't have player cams in it or that have analysis and host cams in it, not player cams or, you know what I mean? So the more complicated your shows get, the more variations on a theme you're gonna have. And so you wanna be specific with that because in the moment when that scene is being called for, you don't wanna be like, having to click through all your various scenes and then looking at the preview to be like, okay, is that the one that has the cams or not the cams? Like, you just want to be able to find it in the title. Okay, I know I need analysis and player cams. Boom, I've got it. If I have one that says main with analysis and doesn't say player cams on it, then I know that that's the one I don't have to worry about. And why is it important? Because if you know off to the side that your player cams are not on, they're not working, they're not connected, or you don't want to show them because of reasons, 
then you'll see right away, well, this has player cams in the scene name. Don't go there, right? Because those player cams aren't ready. When you're in the moment and you're producing a show and, and you've got to move quickly, this helps you move quickly. This helps you just stay organized. And that's what this video is about. Simple things to stay organized. So now let's move on to um, staying organized within the scene list itself, right? So let's say I have a scene that isn't, uh, doesn't involve capturing a chessboard or, or, or cameras or anything. Let's say we have a scene that's just advertising the schedule of the tournament. Okay, so I've made my schedule scene. I'm gonna add my schedule graphic. Uh, let's, uh, let's go find that real quick. Okay, here's my schedule graphic, gorgeous. I'm gonna lock it. Now, these are right next to each other and I'm a very visual person. I organize things through visual structuring so that at a, at a moment, I can just go and find the place just visually, right? The titles help, good scene titling helps, but I'm gonna lay this out visually. So here's a goofy little thing that I learned observing someone else. Uh, I can't remember what production company it was, but I was looking over their shoulder and I saw them do this and I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. Add a scene and just like name it a bunch of dashes or something. Well, now you can move it and treat it like a divider in a binder or something, right? A separator to visually separate the scenes that involve chessboards and complicated captures and the scenes that are just a simple graphic. These like scenes that you're gonna use as separators, right? They still have that rule of needing to have unique names. So if I need another separator, then I'm just gonna use like less dashes than the other one, or I might inject like a weird character into it or something just so that they do have unique names and I can make as, as many of these as I want. Like I said earlier, I like to clump these based on like what is consistent about them. You can even say like, I wanna be more specific about these if it's just a slide and just like start out with slide in the name. Slide dash schedule. Uh, slide dash um, player info card, slide dash format card. Um, if you're going to add videos, start out with the word video, um, such and such. And then the next one, video dash other name. And, and that way, okay, I know that these are videos. I, that's one less second that I'm spending searching like, okay, this says format, but it is, a, is it the format video or is it the format slide? Well, now you don't have to think about that. You just know, okay, uh, slide schedule, video schedule. You know what I mean? Like if you have similar things, just name them in ways that help you categorize them uh, so that it's, it's just easier, right? Let's say that inside this scene, um, I'm gonna capture a Google Doc scoreboard that I've made, right? Well, all right, so let's add a window capture and let's name it appropriately. Don't just leave it as window capture because then what if you have more than one? You've got window capture one, window capture two, window capture three, like what are they? So let's call it something that's gonna help. Well, the first thing is if it's a Google Sheet, then I like to name it Sheet Dash. And then what is the sheet? It's um, it's the scoreboard. But what if there are multiple tabs in that one doc and I'm gonna use them as different things? Well, uh, let's say it's the quarterfinals scoreboard. So I'm gonna go quarterfinals, right? Maybe the sheet in the doc is called quarterfinals so that I know if this says quarterfinals, make sure that I'm on the quarterfinals tab when I start my show. And then another dash, okay, what kind of window capture is it? If it's in Firefox, then I like to put FF, or you can put Firefox. If it's Chrome, I'll say Chrome. If it's Chrome incognito, I'll put Chrome incog. If it's the developer version, I'll put Chrome dev. You know what I mean? So now I know A, this is a capture of a sheet. B, it's the quarterfinals tab on that workbook. 
and see I'm targeting Chrome developer. And then I'll go find my actual window and you do your crops and you know, good news. Great, everything's fine. Um, and that way, if I have another sheet in the same scene, it might be sheet um, player stats Firefox. Well, now I don't have to like click around and unlock to see the bounding box to figure out which one is which. You just know in the description. You're organized. Okay. Another thing that um, OBS Studio has is the ability to color uh, things. So you can uh, right click a source and you could go set color and you could create custom colors or you could just like pick one of those. And now you've got your your thing has a color to it. Um, if you like separating things visually that way, that's another organization tool that exists in OBS for you. Uh, and now here's where we're gonna get into uh, using scene sources, using scenes as sources to not have to repeat a bunch of operations a billion times. I'm gonna show you what this means. So I am going to go and grab a Streamlabs uh, alert box from my account. Okay, so let's add the alert box to one of my main scenes. So browser, I'm gonna call it alert box. I'm gonna paste the alert box URL, okay? And let's, I don't know, let's say I'm gonna put it centered under these cams, okay? And now I'm gonna go hit my uh, test, test follow. Okay, and we've got our alert. Great. So, one thing that people typically do is they will just copy the alert box source in one scene. They'll go to another scene and they will paste the reference. Okay, so now the alert box is in the same exact position in both of these scenes, right? So that their design stays consistent. Okay, well, let's pretend that you have 50 scenes, 50, that all have the alert box in it, okay? And then you have some kind of revision that you do to your template that now you want to change the placement, right, of your alert box. Okay, so here's the problem. Now what if I go, well, you know, because the I changed the design and I put some, let's say I put some element over here, it's better to like, you know, move the alert box there. Okay. But now you've got to go into every single one of these 50 scenes, delete the old one, because if you don't delete it and you just move it in the other one, well, look, they're not quite in the same spot because you just roughly moved it. So you're like, all right, I want it to be in exact same spot. So now I have to go to all 49 of these other scenes, delete it, go back, copy, paste the reference again. And then you have to do that 49 times in each of those scenes to then get back to a consistent placement for your thing. So here's what you do instead. Okay, get ready. I'm going to create a scene. I'm going to call it scene dash alert box because you're gonna see later that I want it to indicate in the source list that it's a scene that I'm targeting and not just its own uh, independent object. Okay, so I'm gonna call it scene, alert box. Okay, now let's put our alert box in there. And one thing you can do, which I do, is I go in and I grab the template that is going to give me the rough elements I need to narrow down the placement that I like for the alert box. So I'm gonna say, okay, I want this oriented against, you know, aligned with the right side edge of this webcam. And then I'm gonna move it down. And then I'm gonna say, I want the spacing top to bottom between that little bottom bar and the top of the thing. Okay, great. Got my placement how I want it, lock it. And then you can either just hide this or you can delete it, right? Either way. I like to just hide it. 
Uh, it's just problematic if you forget to hide it and then you go back and now you have like this thing that's not supposed to be in your other scenes. Um, but if you want to be safe, you can just delete it because now you've got the placement that you want. Okay, let's go back to the actual scenes. I'm gonna delete the alert box as a separate thing, okay? And then I'm going to add a scene source. And then I'm gonna target scene alert box, okay? The reason why I put that word scene in the name of the scene is because if I ever want to look over my sources again, I'll remember, okay, but that's a scene source. You wanna be able to tell what things are being captured from another scene versus what's just a source in that scene. And now you've just used a naming convention that helps you remember that. All right, then copy this one and paste it into all your other scenes. I know, I know, I know. I just said earlier, you don't wanna to have to copy and paste something 50 times, but this is different, trust me, okay? So now you've got the alert box there. I'm gonna go test it again. We'll test the follow. Okay, it's there, the placement is identical, but what if I wanna change it, all right? What if I change my mind and I decide I wanna orient it differently? Okay, so I'm gonna bring this in again as, as, a, as, a, as an alignment thing that I can use to work off of. Now I'm gonna say, oh, well I want it to be aligned over here now. So I moved it, I'm gonna lock it, get rid of my little placeholder so it's only the alert box in this alert box scene and nothing else. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna click test again. Boom, the new alignment has applied across the board because the scene is the source. So anything that you change in the scene, it, it, it is being, that scene is being looked at by this scene source. So anything you do in that scene is applied everywhere, right? If I, if I added um, something else to it, let's add a text layer and I'm gonna say yada yada doobity doo do do. Okay, we'll go over there, guess what? It's there. It's all part of this scene, right? It's just using a scene and it's kind of looking at it with its, it's, it's accepting its transparency and everything. Okay, and if I move this box somewhere else, it's, it's there too. If I delete it, it will delete it everywhere. What you're doing is you're saying, anytime I want something to just be consistent among many, many scenes, it's a little bit more organized to just add those elements into a scene on their own and then use a scene source to look at those things because otherwise you're gonna be making one tiny adjustment and then having to go to all the other scenes that it's in and try to replicate that adjustment. Um, those are some basic stay organized things. If you have other questions, put them in the comment section. If you found some of these tips useful, click the like button, subscribe because I do a bunch of these videos on different production things, OBS things tips and tricks, you name it. I have a how-to series if you're a new streamer and you want to start from zero to hero. I have everything you need to install OBS and get yourself streaming. So um, see you later.